happy Monday. Period. Mr. Martin is running a whole chop shop. The dude said, well, hey, my boys like to work the night shift. He should have told him I like to work the night shift too with my old lady, but I can't do it. Hey guys, it's Sharika and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I would love to have you. So today we are doing some giant crab legs. Here I have my mayo and mustard in the back. For today's drink, this is just a cucumber mint lemonade. It's so good, y'all. So let's go ahead and say grace. Amen. Hey y'all, happy Monday. Period. <laughs> oh snap, let me get my straw. So shout out to Steph and Taj for coming up with this challenge. So this is the Eat Your Seafood with Long Nails Challenge. Period. Hopefully y'all can see me, but I'm gonna grab the ones on the top first. I got this um, lemonade from Whole Foods. It's so good, it'll be perfect for the summer. So we're gonna jump right in. Hopefully these nails do not come off, but you know, if they do, we're gonna still roll with it, so. These things are not easy. Like, I don't see how girls can do this, but they, these things are like, this not easy. Okay, so we got a story time too on top of all that, okay? So let me get in the character, okay? Shit, I can't get this, dude. I can't even get the lemon. Hold on, let me turn this burner off. Girl, I got nail polish all, okay, we don't need to talk about it. I got nail polish all over my hand. I really needed help putting these things on because they were so hard to put on, girl. But, girl, we were right. All right. So, girl, hold on. Try to sit up some. I'm going to take this one down. So, girl, the story is from Fear Thy Neighbor. Okay. Feared our neighbor. Let me see. So it was a guy named. Hold on. I can do that thing, okay? Oh my gosh. So, girl, it was a guy. His name was Martin. Right? So girl, Martin was a single dad. He had two boys. And he was kind of like the Oh, that's good. So he had his own mechanic shop. So being that he worked on cars, he would work on the people in the neighborhood cars too. With no problem, just hook them up. Sometimes, you know, he would do favors for the women and just tell them, you know, just drive my sons to school and we can call it even, right? So everybody liked them, like I said, he, oh shoot. Look how I have to grab this. Now this is a shame and I'ma still eat it. So girl, oh Lord. Oh. So, oh my gosh. Let me tell y'all something. If y'all haven't tried this challenge yet, it's not gonna go like you think it's gonna go. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, so everybody liked him in the neighborhood. Like I said, if something was wrong with, you know, your car or whatever, he the man to call. And he would look out for you. So, there was this empty lot next door to his house. 
And he basically just made it like a little playground for the kids to play in, mostly his kids. Cause, um, cause like I said, he had two boys. So, you know, they played in the field. So one day, somebody moved in the house next to the field. So he had new neighbors. This guy's name was Cole. Cole had a girlfriend and two daughters. So the kids start playing together. They introduce themselves, whatever, whatever. Everything cool. Everybody seemed nice. Everybody getting along. Everything was good. So months go by, there's no problem. You know, everybody getting along like they're supposed to. So Cole, he really he was into insurance, but he also did music on the side, and that was what he wanted to do full time. And he had already worked with like some real big artists before, like people that we know. So girl. He got a call from LA with an opportunity of a lifetime. So his girlfriend was like, well, just go ahead and go, but he would have to be gone for 18 months. So his girlfriend was like, just go ahead and go. I'll take care of the kids, the house, the dog, whatever I need to take care of. Right. So he left and after a while, we'll call her, we'll call her Pam. After a while, Pam, she couldn't handle it. Like the, the yard needing to be cut, you know, this, that, and the third. So she ended up moving in with her mom. Of course, they still own the house or whatever, but um, she just didn't want to live in the house. So he was still paying the bills or whatever, and they just moved somewhere else where they were more comfortable. Okay, y'all following me? So girl, Martin, the mechanic guy, receives a letter in the mail saying that, oh, I need to get this one little piece of, okay, we're gonna leave you right there. So Martin gets a notice in the mail that he had some issues with his shop, um, some zoning issues, and they closed the shop down. Now, mind you, he is a single parent. He got two boys, and, you know, he need that money. So by this time, the house is looking basically abandoned because they didn't tell the neighbors anything on what was going on. And the grass not cut, the girl would ride by that every now and then, but the grass wasn't cut and they haven't seen these neighbors and they don't know how long. So they felt like, oh, they just up and left. Right? So Martin came up with this brilliant idea that he was just going to use that space and do his work at the house. Right? So... That's what he did. He brought all his old cars. It looked like a junkyard, basically. So he had the lot filled up and their front yard and backyard. Y'all, it was a mess, okay? Oh, Lord, I'm going to have an issue with this crap. Hold on. It was a hot mess. Like I said, it was like a junkyard. So... Right when he came up with this brilliant idea and he had it all set up, Cole was back. He went to pick up his girlfriend and his kids from her mama house. They pulled up and he like, what the heck is all this, girl? It was TVs, stoves, hot water heaters, trucks, cars. It was a mess. So he goes over to the neighbor house and he was like, man, what's going on? So the dude was like, well, you know, I thought y'all had abandoned the house. I haven't seen y'all in forever. And, you know, they closed down my shop and I didn't have anywhere else to go. 
So Cole was like, well, that's not my problem. Now, Martin was a big dude. He was like 6'3", like 200 and something pounds. And Cole was a little short dude, like 5'6", 5'7". And, you know, he was small. So he would just kind of try to boss him around a little bit. So Cole told Martin, I'll give you a week to get this stuff up. Right? And he packed up his stuff and went back to his mother-in-law house. Well, it's not his mother-in-law yet because they're not married. They're just checking up. And that's on period. So, girl, this is so good. <laughs> this is a mess, y'all, okay? But it's so much fun. Hold on. I'm going to wipe my hands off because y'all know y'all don't usually see my hands like this. So, girl, Cole will be riding by. One week pass. The hot water heaters, your granddaddy truck, your auntie them truck, still in the yard, okay? It has not moved. Third week, he drives by the property, Martin just loading one TV on the truck. So he like, well, dang, it took you three weeks to move one TV? He was like, man, I told you, I'm going to get it done. I just can't get it done like I want as fast as I want it to, but I'm going to get it done. Right? So, after a while, he got it done. They moved back in. When, he, when they pulled up to the house, the front yard is clean. And they moved their stuff back in. Everything all good. He go in the backyard. Girl, it looked like got that on Sanford and Son back there. Okay. Shoot. This is unbelievable. Okay. Oh my gosh. I just want this one piece of meat that's on this thing. So. He pushed open the gate and started walking in the backyard. Tell me why two pit bulls come running from behind one of the cars and chasing him in the house, into the house. So he recorded because they jumping at the windows and everything because they see somebody looking out the window. So the dog's just going crazy. So finally, when he see Martin put the dogs up, he go knocking on the door. And he said, this is a good welcome home uh, present don't you think and give him the cell phone and let him see that his crazy dogs was trying to chase us down okay so martin goes to apologize and he was like i got a proposition for you now listen at this foolishness okay he said i got a proposition for you why don't you just let me buy the house off you for a thousand dollars Boy, buy your mama house for a thousand dollars. You can't get my house for a thousand dollars. Are you crazy? So he was like, okay, five thousand, five thousand. He was like, no. He was like, okay, I can do six. I can do six. So he was like, I can't believe that you actually asking me this stuff. Like my house is not for sale. And besides, I'm not a crackhead. You can't buy my house for six thousand dollars. If that's the case, you need to go buy you a whole nother lot and put this junk on it and, and get it out of my yard. That's what you need to do. So, he was like, well, just think about it. And he walked off. And he went on about his business. This is bad, I know. So, girl. One night, they can't sleep. Cole and his old lady, they can't sleep because... Martin them over there with all types of machines and just making so much noise three o'clock in the morning. Of course, he complained about that. The dude said, well, hey, my boys like to work the night shift. He should have told him, I like to work the night shift too with my old lady, but I can't do it because I can't get no straightening with you. So, 
one day Cole in the living room trying to do some work on his computer because he was like a um insurance agent or something like that so he's trying to do some work on the computer his internet wasn't working he went on the porch the internet line is clipped he calls the cable company to come out there when the dude got out there and saw all this junk in the backyard, he was like, hey, man, I can't do all this. Like, it was like wood and pallets and everything. So he was like, man, I can't I can't work back here. So the dude just begged him, begged him, probably slipped him a little 20 under the table and was like, just do it for me, man, whatever. So, girl, the dude then climbed up the pallets to get to the pole. All of a sudden, here comes the guy dang on two pit bulls. When I tell y'all, I hollered so loud. That thing was so funny. The two pit bulls then chased this man. He is up on some one of the junk cars out there screaming, come help me, come help me, whatever. <laughs> Girl, that thing was good, okay? The reenactment was funny, I don't know what. So... I already know I can't give in this. I ain't gonna even try. So, girl, by this time, Cole, oh, he hot. Because he need his cable. He tied the dogs, the neighbors, the junk, everything. I should have named him Samford, but we, we'll do that another time. So, the police come out there. Martin had put the dogs up. The police come out there and Cole tells the police Martin made the dogs attack the cable guy. So Martin was like, sometimes the dogs get loose. My apologies, you know, extra polite while the police out there. So then uh, Cole took the opportunity to say, well, that's not all. He left a mess in my yard. He got all this junk back here, whatever, whatever. So the police opened the gate and just looked back there and said, you need to get rid of this stuff and that's a big fine. And just left it at that, right? So once the police left, Martin told Cole, snitches get stitches, right? And he went in the house. The next morning when Cole comes out his front door, it's a dead rat on his porch. Okay. So they just going back and forth. So now at this point, the dude can't stand them. They can't stand each other. So what um, Cole decided to do was put up some fake um, security cameras just to kind of intimidate him a little bit to where he wouldn't come on his property, he wouldn't harass them or anything like that. So he decided to put up a fake security camera. And also, in Cole Yard, there was a bunch of bushes that blocked Martin's yard with all the cars. So Cole decided to cut all those branches down so he can get a clear view of what was going on. Girl, one night he decided he gonna be inspect the gadget. He got binoculars and everything looking over there in the neighbor's yard. Come to find out, Mr. Martin is running a whole chop shop. So they're still in the cars, bringing them to the house late at night, ripping the parts off and he'll resell them. So Cole was saying he can't live next door to that. He had, because he's into insurance, and he has the obligation to report things like that if he see anything like that going down. So, he decides to go have a meeting with the other neighbors and tell them what's going down. And again, that's their man when they need something done to their car. He always helped them out. And they was like, hey, that's not our business. That's not our business. We ain't getting in nobody business, okay? He nice to us. He cool with us. Matter of fact, I need to jump right now. And I know he'll get to me. So, let me take this bite.
Oh, that's good. All right, hopefully y'all can still see the food because I had to restart my camera. So girl, he done told the other neighbors what he was gonna do was just buy that extra lot that's on the side that's in between them. So the guy would be forced to move all of that stuff from out of there, all right? So one of the neighbors that he told that to went and told Martin. And baby, when he told Martin, oh, it was on from there. Oh, oh Lord. Mm. Yeah. So, one day, Cole walking. Cole walking out to his car. Shit. There we go. <laughs> Cole walking out to his car. Martin runs up on him. Choke him out. He uh, pick him up off his feet, shaking him in the air. Call him a snitch. Tell him he lying on him. You getting the police of all. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you that. Boom, boom, whatever. Choke the man out. So this dude was so scared, he didn't call the police. He decided he's gonna go down to the police station so um, Martin don't know that the police was called. So when he told him, like, my neighbor just assaulted me, I have the proof around my neck. And, hold on girl. And they was like, okay, well, we'll just put in a report. And that was it. We'll file a report and that was it. So, at this time, Cole was like, okay, you know, enough is enough. He done got physical with me. Choked me out in front of my, my girlfriend and my kids. I can't do this no more. He's messing with my manhood. Okay. He making me look like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't about that life. So he said, well, we're going to go ahead and just sell the house because it's just not worth it. <sighs> so they put a for sale sign up and he sent his girlfriend and the kids to live with her mom. So the girlfriend, she had a peacemaker. So while they was walking out the door, she said, here, you need to have this peacemaker with you because these dudes out here in these streets and they put their hands on you and you got to protect yourself. So he was like, okay, so wherever they live, you can carry, I, I forgot like the terms for like an open carry state or something like that where, you know, you can have your, your peace with you. Just as long as you know it's registered, this, that, and the third. So, girl, he got the peacemaker on his hip. But he would try to avoid Martin at all costs, okay? If he came home from work and he see Martin in the yard, he'll just keep driving. If, if, he, if he see Martin outside before he go to work, he won't leave until Martin leave. Like, he really did try to avoid him. So this one day, he said he had a real good day coming from work because he had just closed on a really big deal at work. So the kids was outside, the birds was chirping, everything was all good, everybody laughing, just having a good time. Martin, nowhere in sight. I really hope the lighting went messed up. I didn't even touch nothing else, but I can't adjust it because these daggone nails. Oh, hell. So, when he gets to his house, he noticed that somebody basically dropped some trash off. It was like a big black trash bag, but it had been ripped open, so now the trash is just scattered all over his yard. So some of the neighbors was outside and he was like, is this y'all trash? And they'll be like, no, that's not my trash. He'll ask somebody else, is this y'all trash? They'll be like, no, that's not my trash. 
So he goes through, he goes through the trash and he picks up like a letter or like a bill collecting letter and he see the people name on the letter. So he calling them on the phone and he like, you know, he just waiting on the phone, just ringing and he calling them on the phone or whatever. <laughs> Girl, I am tripping myself out with these lips. So he calling them on the phone and all of a sudden Martin pull up. So Martin must have put that trash on that man lawn because as soon as Martin see him out there with the phone, he starts running full speed towards Cole, telling him, hang up the phone, hang up the phone. You calling the police on me? I ain't put that trash in your yard. I ain't put that trash in your yard. So he was like, okay, man, back up. Like, I don't want, I don't want none of this. I don't want no drama with you. Just back up. I don't, I'm just trying to call the people who the trash belong to. I'm just, you know, just back up, back up. So he was like, I'm tired of you. You a snitch. I already told you. They had said that he had been drinking. He was aggravated and he just went all in. So the other neighbors was outside. They hear them arguing. They see them arguing. And then all of a sudden, Martin just attacks Cole. Okay. He tried to choke him out again. But this time, Cole has the peacemaker. So, and he tell him, he like, you know, I lift up my shirt to let him know, like, back up off me. But he was still coming at him. So once he went to attack him and jack him up and they kind of scuffling a little bit. And then Cole pulls out the peacemaker and just emptied the clip. Right? The neighbors screaming, everybody run you know, run down there, try to make sure everything's all good, but it was all bad. So they called the police. The ambulance came about 45 minutes after that. Martin passed. They arrested Cole. Of course, I don't know how long he stayed in jail, if he did, if he bonded out or what, but I just know once he went to trial, they found him not guilty and it was self-defense. So that's what happened, girl. Okay, guys, so I hope you're done eating. If you're eating with me, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at I am Sharika B, and I will see you guys on the next one. Period. <laughs> Bye, y'all.